Good morning, everyone. My name's Mary, Mary McCarthy. Let me tell you um, how I came here to Pate. I mean, today, I'm going to talk to you about street art as a tool for change. My passion started in Bristol. I was actually studying history of art at the university there, and I started noticing some amazing street art on the streets. And what I found was actually I was far more interested in what I was seeing outside than what I was learning in the lecture halls. That's where my passion started. <clears throat> so today's talk is going beyond, and its definition of those people who dare, dream, question and challenge, whether it be for pure rebellion or necessity, for the past and for the future, for no reason and for vital ones, for themselves or for greater good, in my mind, really encapsulates all that street art stands for. Street art began in a place of rebellion. It speaks of spiritual survival. It was often the only tool of the poverty-stricken, the disenfranchised, to communicate their stories, their sense of place. When you have nothing, being able to claim a wall marks your sense of ownership of your place, your town. It's a mark to claim humanness. It's a marker for the future. The street has long been a place to advocate or express your personal, political or social opinions. From its historic role as a meeting place for revolution, in the last few decades, it has become the place, the medium and the message. Street art's birth in an art historical context started in 1968 in Philadelphia, then New York, and followed swiftly by Paris soon after. This development represented a major shift into how art movements came into being, inasmuch as its motivating imperative was disaffection, poverty, and urban blight. Inner city youths going beyond their day to day deprivation of their lives by reimagining themselves as larger than life, almost super heroic, ultra visual egos. With pen names such as Days, Blade, Crash, these artists painted their names in 10 foot high letters on subway trains, spreading their news of their nocturnal adventures across the city. So, graffiti was the the template, the means, the method, but street art adopted all of this and pushed the boundaries of what outside art can be, going beyond anything achieved during the golden age of graffiti's early evolution. Few can ignore Rhone's 20-storey murals splashed across the city or JR's 3D installations at this year's Olympic Games in Rio or Banksy's selling for thousands of pounds. I believe that the street art movement has gone beyond all art movements to date. Stylistically, politically, socially, it has inspired, challenged and changed people's lives positively across the globe. In terms of style, street artists utilise their day-to-day -day environment like no other movement before. It goes beyond the sort of confines of an art school training or <coughs> to create works on any background from walls to railings, from buildings to trucks to vehicles, etc. This is a work by Ernest Zakharyevich. You can see that he's found a motorbike on an old farm door and, and painted a, a figure, forming this perfect image. Or P. Jack, which basically he's cut into the glass and the little boy doing a slingshot and smashing, you know, trying to fire at the birds perfectly formed from this medium, or vills where he chips away at the building to realise an image that comes through from the actual side of the building. Or Os Gemios, for instance, this work is actually done in, um, on a uh, building called the... Um, what's it called? Bottiatiana in Milan. Uh, it's by Os Gemios, it's called Ephemero, and it was a project done with Cida Lirsham. Here you can see he's actually sort of, obviously it's a fake train, but how he's actually incorporated the image around this. Or Banksy, on the side of a truck. This is called Silent Majority, and it was actually the home of the people that you can see in this image. Obviously, the, what Banksy's doing here is a mural on the side of a truck. What I'm saying is, the, the mural is not a new invention. Far from it. I mean, obviously, you've got from murals from Michelangelo to Diego Rivera and the Mexican muralism. But the nature and versatility in which street artists use 
any medium in, on and around the street to communicate their message is unprecedented. So, moving on to politically. Politically, with the street as their medium, they can voice their thoughts instantly, changing rhetoric and opinion through their direct communication to the people. Street art can become very influential very quickly. I mean, for instance, take this image here by Shepard Ferry called Hope. He produced this in one day on the street, and soon after it was adopted by Obama supporters and was a very ex a successful tool in, in their campaign. Socially, street artist work is now being used as a proactive tool for change, transforming areas across the globe. Windward Walls in Miami, um, <coughs> the Goldman family, have actually almost single-handedly gentrified one of the most dangerous areas of the city. With a specific and good-hearted program of embracing and encouraging street art in Windward, the area has been completely and utterly transformed and is now a, both an international tourist attraction and an affluent neighbourhood in its own right. Just showing you a pic here of um, Windward Walls from above. And actually, this is a, a moving art exhibition. It, it's a, actually a part of the Miami Basel Fair that happens right now. Normally, I'm there. Um, and it's changed, um, you know, so about 89% of the walls change every year. It's an absolute mecca for tourists and art buyers and collectors and enthusiasts. Uh, what they've done there is, is amazing. And Kenny Scarf, an infamous street artist, uh, just a picture of one of his works at Windward Walls. So, moving swiftly on, similar schemes by developers and individuals have happened across the globe. In England, for instance, in Shoreditch and in um, Swansea, street art and artistic communities have been actively encouraged, creating a sense of dynamism and relevance. A really positive example of street art being used as a tool for change is JR. Uh, and the series of installations he took uh, and he produced in Rio, in the favelas, creating artworks in and around people's homes. These significantly changed the communities in which they lived, enhancing the mood of the neighbourhood and encouraging a sense of pride in a previously sort of disenfranchised residence. JR calls the streets the biggest gallery in the world. I'd like to add, I think it's the most exciting. So, it's moving on to sort of looking at the internet and how um, that has really changed um, street art and, and how it's had such a global impact. So, I'm showing you a picture here of Wide Walls and uh, Global Street Art. Lee Bofkin, who runs Global Street Art, by far is it not just an uh, internet site. It is also, um, they actually provide an illustration for street artists to do legal murals across the world. In fact, they've done or organised 1,500 since 2012. So um, he, he is a, a fabulous guy and, and what he's achieved for street artists is incredible. So moving on. Um, the internet has both grown the street art market and in turn the street art market has, because of the internet, decentralised control the global art market. It enables artists and individuals to directly promote their work. Artists have actually taken control of their work and in the last decade have changed the art market fundamentally. They use social online platforms and medias to promote their work directly to the public, communicating with their buyers and the world at large, making the traditional routes to market almost superfluous. Fundamentally, the internet's ability to provide instant live information to a diverse, far-reaching audience has ensured that street art has gone beyond the usual boundaries of the art market. Aside from the internet, the street as a medium has also ensured that street art has a far-reaching appeal, enabling a generation of people to appreciate art that who would normally not be inspired to go into a gallery. The work itself is approachable, appeals to all ages, and the very nature of the content, you don't need an art historical background to get it. Picture of Nick Walker, a uh, vandal in Bristol, for instance. It's very approachable, you understand it. And so street artists have ensured that the art is accessible to all, whether you choose to engage with it or not. You can't help but see it. 
From an art market's perspective, street art has opened up a whole new plethora of buyers, an audience that has never been part of this equation before. A buying power, in fact, that has propelled this industry into a multi-billion pound art industry. One of the main reasons why this art has been so accessible and popular is the ability of this art, these artists to live in the here and now, to live in the moment, and to express a personal, a social or a political rhetoric. A rhetoric that is immediately understood, a collective consciousness that we can all relate to. I'd just like to talk to you now about one particular piece that has um, really changed people's lives, and that's Banksy's Mobile Lovers. Um, Banksy and all his work really, really do comment on modern society and its ironies. I mean, in this work, you can see the artist pointing that modern technology, specifically iPhones in this instance, really, and social media, obviously, hold us all in a sort of state of constant, constant sort of detachment, you know, that we can't talk to each other, even though we're actually in each other's company. Banksy created this work with the clear intention of helping the boys' club, called Ball Playing Boys' Club. He would have been aware about the financial predicament that they were in due to the appeal, massive appeal that they had in Bristol that year. And it's even possible that he might have attended the club. Who knows? Um, I was approached by Ball Playing Golf Club to boys' club, excuse me, to sell the work um, after Banksy acknowledged authenticity and the right of the boys' club to sell it. I subsequently sold this to a private collector for £403,000, ensuring the club's future. But most importantly, without Banksy's intervention, this club would have closed. So you can see it's a direct and powerful example of street art, and specifically Banksy in this case, changing people's lives positively. So, <clears throat> previously described as vandalism and wanton criminal destruction, thankfully, street art has seen a noticeable softening of the judicial system towards it. With councils now protecting works of art as cultural heritage for tourists. There is somewhat of a paradox here. In the UK, some council councils are punishing those who graffiti areas while simultaneously sort of promoting areas that have been graffitied. In the city of Bristol, which is considered actually the birthplace of modern British street art, this has been at the forefront of this paradox. The picture here by Inky, who's a very infamous Bristol street artist. Now, for a number of reasons, its size, geography, multicultural population, was one of, Bristol was one of the first cities in the UK to embrace the seminal hip-hop culture from New York. Recently, I was talking to a chap called John Nation, he's known as the Graff Father, um, and he's a key figure in Bristol's underground art and music scene. And I was chatting to him about the difference between graffiti and street art, and how it's viewed differently by the artists, communities and the law. He mentioned that have, uh, over the last sort of couple of years, there'd been a huge upsurge in tagging. And to combat this, the Bristol Police um, in partnership with the City Council, have set up something called Operation Block. So, on the other hand, the Council are now protecting works by Banksy, Inky and other street artists uh, as cultural heritage and are actively encouraging street art. So we can see that graffiti and street art are being viewed differently. The former unacceptable, the latter acceptable. On discussing this matter with the Bristol Police, say, the police do not want to determine exactly what is street art and where it is painted. We just want to eradicate illegal graffiti in Bristol. So to date, there is no sort of legal distinction between the two. I mean, prosecutions vary massively or not at all if deemed aesthetically pleasing. So the council now, though, are actually apparently looking at transforming a working policy and defining exactly what is street art and where it's acceptable to be painted. So what we're seeing now by this example is that graffiti art and street art are forcing the law to re-evaluate what is right and wrong and thereby challenging the very institutional confines of law. However, Saying all that, it is very, very rare these days that street art is created without sanction. 
It was almost 10 years ago that the Tate Modern in London dedicated an entire exhibition to the street art movement. It is now mainstream. Certainly that it was produced uh, previously without sanction gave the artists a rebellious edge. But those who are really achieving huge acclaim now are working largely within the confines of law. Combine this with those who are actively encouraged to create art in public spaces, to aid development, and it's clear that what we are now seeing is really a mural movement that carries on very much in the sort of tradition of Mexican muralism, in as much as they are being commissioned and utilised as a form of municipal improvement and large-scale public artworks, gentrifying areas. This, in my mind, is a natural evolution of a separate movement on from street art, a sanctioned, paid-for, decriminalised version of its antecedents. I mean, to contextualise this within an art historical framework as post-street art, as it is largely created within the confines of law, unlike its predecessor street art, which was formed from graffiti culture and created works illegally on the street. But ultimately, to expect that this art form exists within the confines of labels is completely misunderstand what it stands for. Street art was born from graffiti and the drive for freedom of expression. There is no singular precise aesthetic code it is one of the broadest and most free of art forms. In conclusion, the street art movement is going beyond. We're living in it right now. It's evolving continuously, and few movements before this can boast so many living artists reaching such high acclaim. It has impacted the art market, democratised the art buyer market, made art accessible and approachable to all. The evolution of this to a street art movement where so many use their art for good, for political comment, and to envision a better future. Beyond the commercial, even the aesthetic, in my mind proves that street art has changed generations like no other movement before. And it is the most multifaceted and prolific art movement in the history of art. Thank you. Thank you.